It's 8 a.m. the day after our splash. And we're out again. Twin times on the launch pad. <laughs> so we were way off. Way off. All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. and now the noceums are eating us alive. We are so close to the water. After three months in our landlocked boatyard, we finally made it out. Solianus was put on a truck and trailered a couple miles down the road to another yard with water access, where she was transferred into a travel lift in preparation for splashing. Wow, left me hanging twice. Left me hanging Oh, twice. sorry. I didn't know it was, I thought you were pushing me out of the way. I thought you were going, get out of the way. <laughs> this is step 99 of 100. <laughs> <laughs> well, that thing's fugly. Yeah, it is. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, so this is how far we got it down last time. Yeah. So that's pretty For the, uh, the power wash. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty far. It's pretty gross up there. It's like, it's like Little Mermaid under there. That's pretty dang clean. Yeah. Whoa. So, uh, I know you're sitting right now, but where did all this energy come from? Well, the water is right there. <laughs> we are so close to the water. So close, we can see it. We can sort of smell it. It smells kind of swampy. <laughs> So what's happening right now? Well, we're scraping the center board, getting it ready for paint tomorrow. And Lauren made me a super fantastic drink, so I'm taking a breather. Mm, what did I make you? I don't know, what did you make me? I made you a master meal. Oh, hi Chip. Back to it. Shift number three. <laughs> the late shift. How long do they shake it at the store for you? I don't know, like two minutes. So, so probably like 20 minutes human time equals, what are you, five minutes in? No, a long I've way done to five go. minutes three times. <laughs> We're done. We're done. It's shooking. Did we talk about using the hydro coat for no, the center board? The only way to get access to our center board is to be raised up in slings. We cannot hang longer than a weekend in the slings. And copper coat, you need three days, th at least. Because the barrier coat needs to be applied, then it needs 24 hours. And then you need to apply the copper coat, which, you know, takes a few hours. But then you need 48 hours after the copper coat is applied for it to dry. So it's just, there's no way for us to put copper coat on the center board, which is a bummer. So we're going to throw on four coats of this and call it good. So I sanded last night. Well, I scraped and then I sanded and this morning I wiped it all down. I also put uh, West System Epoxy on the spots where the blocks were sitting under our keel and then roughed that up a bit this morning uh, just to kind of act as a barrier coat on those spots. In the center board we didn't have enough or enough time and there wasn't any barrier coat on it anyhow so there certainly wasn't any two-part barrier coat on it. Oh, okay. There may have been a barrier paint, hmm. but even that, it was off in most spots. So, all right. I am so ready. Sitting here being ready. in my chair, being super ready. <laughs> What'd you do? Dip the whole paint roller. <laughs> yeah, just trying to coat the roller and just our $80 trying to paint. use as much of our eighty-dollar paint on anything I can before it gets on the boat. As possible. Yep, all over that glove. All right, here we go. Look at that. Well, that'd be freaking pretty. For all those times that we're going to see the center board. Yeah, all those five times. <laughs> we're pretty much never going to see the center board. Yeah. Unless we drop it down to, to clean. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's not like we're going to leave it down while we're swimming around the boat. Right. All right, I think we can uh, raise probably it raise, or lower, lower down. it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. I almost think we should just put on coats until we run out of time. Yeah. Or run out of paint. Sure, why not? Yesterday, Kirk finished everything below the waterline. We got the centerboard painted, uh, we got our plug back in our rudder, so we're finishing the bimini patterning today. Round two of the bimini patterning. After we figured out that we incorrectly tensioned and then didn't properly tape off the sides of the bows and mm, it was a nightmare. So we redid everything, we measured everything over again this morning. We've got our first pattern on and now we're going to do the back pattern which is in between the back bow and the intermediate bow. So we've got two sets of pattern marks on this pattern and on the other one too. Um, so we flipped it over and we fortunately had another color of Sharpie, so now we know that the good one is purple. A lovely windy day to make a bimini pattern. Yeah. Can you tape this or hold me while I tape this down? Yeah. It was way too windy earlier. So we waited until the wind died down. And now the no CMs are eating us alive. Well, it's the last time we're going to see her looking like this for a while. It's been a long, hard couple of months. But today is finally the day. in the water. We launched this morning at 8 a.m. and they pull you out of the slip so that you don't start up your motor and catch the slings in your propeller and it's just it's a really tight squeeze so they pulled us around and we fired up the engine again just to make sure everything was working with the through hull. Bill just dry. I patched a through hull and replace the through hole, and both of those are dry so far. See so what happens tomorrow. <laughs> and then it came time to kind of test the propeller because we rebuilt our auto stream feathering propeller while we were hauled out. And we were tied really tightly because we've got another boat like immediately behind us and we were kind of overlapping. We put it in forward and it didn't really seem like it was tugging on the dock lines a whole lot. We put it in reverse and it wasn't moving at all. There was just no water moving. Even when we throttled up the RPM like really high, we immediately knew what the problem was. It was that we didn't put the propeller back together correctly. So when we took the propeller apart, we took video of the whole thing, but we need to get better at taking photos of 
details or video of details before we take stuff apart because we read the instructions and the number for each blade is numbered one two three and they're supposed to line up exactly and the blades go on straight and if you get it all right you should have been putting it back together exactly how it was when you took it apart we followed those instructions but when i looked at the propeller blades in forward it didn't look like there was very much pitch that's in forward gear and there's not a whole lot of pitch but when we go into reverse there's even less which is what they say but man that just that doesn't look like it's got hardly any pitch at all but when we looked at it all the numbers lined up perfectly so we took it off and we moved it over a tooth on the gear and then we had much more pitch on both but it wasn't lined up right and we couldn't figure out what we had done wrong and so we had to choose do we line it up one tooth over or do we line everything up right the way that you're supposed to according to the markings according right? to the markings and so that's what we did um but i sort of second guessed everything and i went and i adjusted the pitch on the reverse because it was so flat and i wanted to increase the pitch because it was so flat but it was so flat that when I increased the pitch, I actually put it into a forward pitch. <laughs> so when we got in the water today, we actually had... So instead of having forward and reverse, we had some forward and, and nothing. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, we're not launching at a very busy time of year because it took us so long to get out of the yard. And we were able to get rehauled back out today. There is a guy who came around who's a prop specialist. Um, Either he had never taken one of these apart before and only knew of them in passing or said, yeah, he knew what it was because he's the prop specialist and he's supposed to know what it was. I had to give him a number of instructional steps because he put the blades on wrong like five or six times. Long story short, he got the job done and we took the boat out for a sea trial just now. We have forward and we have reverse and everything is working but we have way too much pitch in both, for both which, forward and reverse. Which means what in the water? Your boat is supposed to operate at a, between 70 to 80% of the max RPM at cruising speed, and then have about 20 to 30% of your throttle left to kind of give you a little more power. When your propeller has too much pitch, you hit your cruising speed way too low, and so you give the boat more and more throttle, more and more fuel to push the boat harder, but it doesn't increase the RPMs because it's it, it doesn't have enough horsepower. So from here to there, it doesn't really change RPM. That's about, I'd say that's, that's like almost half throttle. So the torque band and the horsepower band are converging up here, but you're somewhere down here hitting hull speed. And so you don't have that magic mesh of torque and horsepower to have your engine operating efficiently. And so what that means is a number of things. You burn too much fuel because you're throttling up the RPM and it's just spitting fuel into the engine and then the engine isn't combusting it properly. So then you're coating your exhaust with black soot, you're creating black smoke and it puts a lot of wear and tear on it. Conversely, if you don't have enough pitch and you get too high of RPMs, you're redlining before you hit your hull speed, you don't want that either. So we have to find a happy medium. And we hit hull speed today at about 50% of throttle. We're gonna actually haul out again tomorrow morning because um, the propeller guy didn't use Loctite on the, the nuts and we didn't safety wire the, the nuts that hold the prop on. So we have to be hauled out again. Haul out number three, the boyard here has been great. Uh, so anyhow, we're hauling out tomorrow. We're going to lock everything down after we make a few minor adjustments to the pitch. Um, and then we've got another day or two here to load everything onto the boat, kind of get the boat ship shape and ready to head out. So right now we are drinking to a mostly successful sea trial. <laughs> Cheers. It's 8 a.m. the day after our splash, and we're out again. So this is reverse. Hmm? Yeah, that's huge. And this is forward.
Mm. Fun times on the launch pad. All right. So the first thing I want to do though, is I think just see, well, if we can't change the pitch enough with the screws, we're going to have to take it apart again. Okay. So we should just, should we see, see if we, we should see what happens with the screws, right? Okay. So let's adjust the forward first. Okay. Turn is 300 RPM as it says. So we have oh, seven really? turns. How many are seven times three is 2100 RPM. Yeah. So we should be able to completely adjust this, adjust once, this once, we once we're close. Yeah. Okay. So we were way off. Way off. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, that, I mean, that sits with what I thought, half throttle. You were way off. Yeah. So can we look at the forward photo from before? It's unfortunately our camera's not there. <laughs> The screws actually allowed for a much wider range of RPM adjustment than we thought, so we were able to change the pitch of the prop without having to take it apart. And this also ensured that we'd have enough leeway left to make minor adjustments in the water if necessary. I think we're good? I think we're good. Or at least much better. This is what we're trying to avoid. So yesterday when the, the prop guy put the prop on, we, we didn't have enough pitch before, and now we have way too much pitch. This is all exhaust soot from when the engine we were giving it more and more throttle but the rpms weren't increasing because the boat couldn't spin the prop any faster we should try and wipe that off yeah so All right. should we lube her up i think i think we're ready Hopefully third time's the charm. Right. Okay, we're gonna reverse. We move. We at least know that. And that's only at six knots right there. But we are doing a headwind. Yeah, we didn't go any higher than that. We didn't get up to full hull speed, but we got very close with where we think our kind of normal RPM should be. We don't have a tachometer, unfortunately. <laughs> so we're going by sound and vibrations and what we remember. Uh, we're gonna get a photo non-contact tachometer that we can put on the flywheel of the engine and we'll confirm when we do some prop fine tuning. but. I think we are very, very close to where we need to be. Oh, hold up. Look at this. A ring that we're going to replace. Oh, look at that. After bending on our mainsail, we said goodbye to Kirk's parents, who'd been around to see us out of the boatyard, and then we took off. How cute is that? Love, it's called the Huff and Puff. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cute. It's tiny. So, uh, just on our boat, in the water. Motrin. Motrin. We're going about nine miles and then we're going to sit outside a lock, wait for high tide so that there's going to be enough water on the other side of the lock. But yeah. We're out. We're out. Everything seems to be going all right. Despite being a little bit under pitched on the prop, so we are going to have to make some adjustments. We can really only do about five and a half knots right now and we should be doing six and a half. Uh, but the motor seems to be running fine. Temperature's right where it's supposed to be. The new alternator's putting out good power. Yeah, yeah. So things are going well. Let's dig into this thing. We haven't even opened this thing. Yeah, we've looked inside and yep, thought. There's a sale. Sweet, crispy new sale. <laughs> 20 knots, new head sale. Woo! 